This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here on Twitter, and uh, this is the show where we talk to people in and around independent professional wrestling, and sometimes people from your TV, as is the case today. But please subscribe to everything Indie Mayhem Show on the iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the uh, Google Play Music uh, podcast section. Wow, that's a lot of words for one place. And also the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page, and of course over at IndieWrestling.us, where a lot of people we talk with, you can actually look up and uh, see matches from them. And brand new, actually launching this week, is the IndieWrestling.us Twitch channel, where you can catch a lot of these people in action, and some of our interviews, including this as well. Uh, and also, please, uh, thanks thanks a lot to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show as of this recording. And probably by the time you guys hear this on the uh, podcast, uh, we will have our uh, Patreon in the bank uh, night of mayhem mania booking uh, over on the main show. Uh, we're in, we're just a few, but there's a few more perks that we're working on for uh, after WrestleMania season as well. So go check that out, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Well, uh, our guest today goes by, well, now many names. Uh, <laughs> one of them was just uh, just shown on television uh, just over a week ago as of this recording in Cleveland, Ohio. I was fortunate to be on the audience and say, hey, I know that person. Uh, she is now known as Jamie Frost, Lady Frost. That's and, right. Yeah, but you're also known as, of course. Ellie Fredericks was the original name. Mm-hmm. And they took the liberty to just name me Jamie Frost. Mm-hmm. So we're rolling with it. So I want to get into that and, and and how this was kind of your first professional wrestling match on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment. But first, I like the kind of a little icebreaker so people can get to know you if they don't ice, know you yet. Icebreaker? A little ice. Oh, a I like, icebreaker. Uh-huh, I like what you said there. <laughs> uh, but uh, what is your first, uh, what's your first memory of, uh, of pro wrestling? Um, oh, man. So we're going to get deep. My, um, <laughs> my pap actually was a studio wrestler. He went under the name of the Batman. He wrestled with Bruno San Martino. He was the Batman? He was the Batman. I know. I don't tell a lot of people this. <laughs> what? I know. I waited to break the big news. <laughs> so, yeah, if you watched wrestling back in the day, um, he still lives in Florida. My family lives down there. Um, I don't really see them, but mm-hmm. I do remember all of the photos and – him just being wild and crazy and always in the gym and wow. making me work out at a very young age. Really? So yeah, so that's where you got the bucks. I know, I know from your Instagram and everything and talking with you, you're, you're a real big into the workouts. Yes. Yeah. I run uh, a fitness business, so it's been a part of my life forever. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. And for those that don't know, again, like Pittsburgh studio wrestling, huge thing here. Again, Bruno, a lot of names you've heard of. We've been, kind of trying to get some stuff together for a documentary here for several years actually and uh if you go look up i think it was a batman with like two t's or something yes. wasn't it and he yes. dressed like batman and yep. you can get away with that on local uh <laughs> wrestling right, television right. back then right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome i had no idea um so you so you're pretty ingrained with wrestling really early on i was i watched it all the time yeah. um i won't lie i kind of strayed as i got older and you know, family separation. It wasn't mm-hmm. a part of my life as much as it is today. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So tell me what what kind of brought you kind of around to it uh, to to the independent professional wrestling here uh, locally. Um, I'm sure anyone that knows me in real life knows that it's my boyfriend Shane. He goes by the moniker the Savage Gentleman. Mm-hmm. And that's where I got the Lady Ellie. Um, but. You know, I first started coming around and just watching and being behind the table, selling T-shirts. And then, you know, you get the bug. And I was a performer. I was a gymnast, a dancer. And I said, well, why don't I just be your manager? Mm -hmm. I That's real life. I'm his manager in Mm -hmm. real life. So um, we started playing around with ideas. And that's how it really started for me. And then, you know, once you get that far in, I can't just dip my toes in anything. I'm mm-hmm. I'm all in. It's black or white. So I just 100% do 
dove in and that's how this all started. That's awesome. Oh, before we get to the training, I want to talk about that because we, we've actually been having a lot of discussions about like you guys have been doing this evolution. Uh, Shane in your face, if anybody wants to check out the interview we did with him. Geez, it had been almost a year ago, I think. And he's a, a wildly more. different character. He's definitely due yes. to get back in for us to kind of update with it. Um, but you became part of that. And you guys, you know, he started kind of going to the Savage Gentleman. You guys are doing this, 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 uh, what would you say, Victorian kind of look and everything. And yeah. it's been this really different vibe that's kind of uh, stuck out a little bit in, in recent months. Thank you. I appreciate it. It feels, uh, it feels organic, I guess, for us. Um, we're both actually kind of old timey, classic, traditional. And I think um, it felt for us more adult. Um, I think both of us kind of like grew up too soon, too early. And it's like mm -hmm. fun to be goofy and laugh around and silly, but it's more natural to play something a little bit more sophisticated. I think for the two of us, um, as we interact, that's how we interact in real life. And you'll see promos where you know, some of them were just filmed in our house by candlelight and that's how we live. And some people joke like, this is so weird. This is not you guys because they're used to seeing us goofy and in mm -hmm. the gym. But um, it actually is very natural for us. Um, but it is different than where he started with MMA and just being a fighter and a tough guy. Um, you know, you add a different element when you add a lady into the mix mm -hmm. and he can't just be the, the tough guy all the time. So... That's how, I don't know, that's how it started for the two of us in the wrestling world. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, it was interesting because I saw, I, I, I happened to catch a little bit of the Jimmy Jacobs um, seminar. Okay. Uh, I got to see a little bit of footage of that. And, and, oh, and, man. And I think this was right before, this was definitely before Raw. And, and, and it, was, it was interesting to see, um, you know, you were kind of a little nervous about doing a promo, like off the oh, cuff. Yeah. And then they got you out there, like, on television doing that, you know, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of jump up for you. Right. Well, even before that, I had cut a promo after a show right the week before we left mm -hmm. for LA, which was right before WWE. But, um, uh, one or two, it would have been one shot, but we took two Shane kind of fumbled, but, um, took a live promo there. It never got aired, but, um, I'm kind of better when I know it's coming at the mm -hmm. Jimmy Jacobs seminar. Yeah. I was like put on the spot. Um, I had something going on in my own brain, but like Shane pulled me in. So we were trying to do um, something together. But yeah, it was definitely different being in front of 10 people and then being in front of 30, 40,000. Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> So, so tell me about like you, you know, you, you, you transitioned over and started training. Uh, tell me, tell me kind of how, you know, what was the moment where you're like, I got to get in here and, and, and how you've been training lately? Um, honestly, how it started, it was over a year ago and I was told that I needed training to be a manager. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I wasn't really sold, but I said, sure, I'll come in. I got zero manager training, but I got wrestling training. Uh, a couple months and, you know, some things happened, unfortunately, in our personal life and we put everything on pause and um, it was then that I, I got the bug. I got the itch. I, you know, got in the ring and rolling around and I'm very physically active and still do gymnastics. So I got a little bit of a, a taste of it. And the more I was out on shows, managing, watching everything, I you know, just had that feeling like I can do this. I want to do this. Um, I know there's a place for me here in this world. So, um, I started up training back in January again. Um, so it was, it's sporadic. I haven't even had four months straight of training, but. So how do we get from that to <laughs> sporadic, a few months here in their training to I've debuted on Monday night raw. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, the last few months I have been very, very serious. Both mm. of us actually, Shane just got back from LA with the, um, new Japan dojo. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of thrown ourselves into this world. We knew that we wanted to commit a hundred percent. Um, I'm driving over an hour and a half each way to train, um, at an environment that is absolutely awesome and positive. And I couldn't be happier with where I'm at at rise. Um, they're out in Connellsville. So, um, we have been, like I said, going full speed, but we had sent emails out to WWE 
and we were just going for an extra talent position. And you never know what comes of that. They tell you to bring black for security. For ladies, they say club outfits. I don't even own club outfits. Everyone's like, do you, you don't even club. I'm like, I know. So um, I got some dress, but you know, I showed up in business casual heels and uh, I don't know if they had the spot already pre-planned, but they picked myself and another girl and neither of us could wrestle actually. So it was quite interesting because no one knew what to do. They didn't know if they were going to keep the spot. Um, I actually heard that they called someone else to come in because neither of us could do anything. Uh, long story short, they pretty much gave me an in-ring interview. They pulled me in, tossed it around with me, made me lock up, do some bumps, throw some strikes. And um, Sarah, the trainer for NXT, actually put the match together for us. Um, Oscar doesn't speak much English. So it was interesting in that regard, trying to put something together uh, through, you know, third party. But it was, it pretty much just evolved second by second. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. And did you know, like, when did you know that you were going to get mic time on television? After they had me in the ring and they put the match together and they saw that I was capable of handling this, they said there was a possibility and then they said it was going to be in the arena only aired and i had a few takes if i needed before oscar's entrance and um after they heard me a few times they made me practice before i went into gorilla the holding room and i guess i looked rather calm <laughs> i was keeping it together somehow and they made a last minute decision, I think, to take it live. So I really didn't know until I was walking down the ramp and I was waiting and waiting. And then Oscar's entrance came and we said, uh, or they told me we're going live. So wow. I didn't even have time to hey, freak out. You say, did they, did they give you those lines? Because there was a yes. lot of discussion about like whether there were lines that you came up with. There was some jokes going around <laughs> that you uh, apparently quoted Scott Steiner at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think people should know the WWE better. It yeah, it was yeah. scripted. They were given to me mm -hmm. um, very specifically. We went over how I would say them a few times. They didn't tweak too much. Uh, it was basically a speed thing. They actually asked me to speed up at one point, which you usually hear slow down, take a pause, all yeah, that kind of. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, really, I just memorized them quickly and mouth them off, and they were like, oh okay, that's good. Yeah. So <laughs> they decided to keep the whole segment. They decided to give me some offense. Um, you know, I guess I just showed up for the occasion. Because they, they just did um, on one of these uh, Oscar squash spots in uh, in uh, Detroit uh, a week or two ago, too. And I remember, it, and it was just, you know, she got hammered for like a minute, right? Uh, and that was it, you right. know. And, right. and I was just like, wow, she got some offense. That's great. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean... It's, it's whatever they want, honestly. Mm -hmm. I showed up, and I did what they asked, and I gave it my best, and I got lucky. You know, um, I think everyone kind of has a shot if you're willing to travel and go work for peanuts and mm -hmm. be in cold venues with no heat and changing behind essentially a shower curtain. You know, you're willing to, to put yourself through that. You have a shot because you, you want it. You know, mm -hmm. no one does that just for, you know, for no reason. So if you're going to put in the work and you're going to get there, yes, timing is very important, but you never know what they're what they're looking for, what they're going to throw at you, like the name Jamie Frost <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> well, but, well, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, again, you've ha you had a name already. They gave you this one. And I think others like uh, I think they gave Delilah Doom a different name. Uh, Britt Baker got her own name when she went on there and everything because, you know, probably was, you know, not offensive you know? <laughs> or, or different and, and simple. Right. They, they like simple names. Um, this is kind of you've kind of embraced this new personality they gave you. Right. Um, and and exploded. There was a point uh, last week. You're like, oh, you know, just a couple months on Twitter. And I already got a thousand followers at some point last week. You know, things like that. Like, how, how's that been for you for that kind of change? Honestly, I just started accounts for Ellie Fredericks, mm -hmm. um, I want to say in January or February. And when Jamie Frost came to fruition, we had some 
impersonators, the imposters, and they were using my photos. And it was really hard to kind of sort things out because I had the different name and I didn't have a lot of followers behind me at that point. Yeah. But, um, you know, I did what I could and I had people backing me and kind of uh, reposting, retweeting, that kind of stuff. But I did gain about uh, 1,000 or 1,500 followers in that first week. Nice. So... That's great. Uh, so, so is the idea? I think we we're talking a little bit beforehand. You know, are you going to kind of roll with this new kind of uh, 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 name, or or roll it back into your old one, or what's kind of the plan so far? The plan, I think, is to keep um, sort of the gimmick that we have with the lady and the gentleman, right. and I'm just gonna add some iciness to it. <laughs> a little frost and i think i'm gonna go under lady frost mm -hmm. um you know it's it's all up to the promoter how they really want to advertise because it's their show and it's what i have to offer them and what they want to how they would like to promote me um i haven't really talked to my trainer on how to go about everything yet so i'm going to be cautious i'm going to finish training i'm going to make sure that i'm safe and um you know i i start wrestling in places that i feel comfortable enough to get myself out there as Lady Frost. Yeah. And that's been the interesting, and I, I've heard this from other people about, uh, you know, about, you know, the gimmicks and, and, and you know, people smarter than me, uh, about you guys are interesting because you're willing to evolve, right? You're not kind of stuck in this is what my character is, X, Y, and Z, and, you know, right. like you realize you, you showed up on WWE and they give you something, right? And you, you have to You have to roll, roll with, with it. it. You have to be willing to evolve, and that's in life. I mean, I've been different I don't want to say characters because I've always been the same person but you go through things that force you to level up to change and you know you should never become complacent or settle that's kind of one of my biggest mottos even in my fitness company is that mm -hmm. you know don't settle and you know you have to be willing to accept what's out there or or change because you know there's always someone nipping at your heels ready to take that spot or come with something innovative or new or flashy. And you have to be willing to, to do what you have to do to make a name for yourself. Absolutely. Uh, Bradley, we have a lot of questions in the chat room right now. Actually. All right, let's get them. Let's, let's go. Get, Who's well, in there? Bradley's worried about you. Bradley, Bradley's asking if you're allowed Hi. to legally use Jamie Frost, which you're using a lady frost thing. So I'm actually, using lady frost. Yeah. I haven't asked. Um, I do have some contacts, but I'm treading lightly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'll see I didn't change everything to Jamie Frost on media or anything. But right, right, right. But, uh, you know, the, the nice image. By the way, I got I to gotta give you props for because um, I was pulling up images of, of for, for um, promoting this. And I love that you looked right at the camera. And I, that, that it's like the this is my new Facebook Facebook profile picture right here. <laughs> Wait, so you know what's great about that? I'm like, oh, crap, oh, crap. If you watch the footage in its entirety because they tell you when you're interviewing, do not look at the camera. Mm -hmm. You look at the interviewer. Yeah. And that was right after the interview. And I was turning to walk away to enter the ring. And I just caught the camera accidentally. And you'll see my face like, oh, crap, a little bit because you're not supposed to look at the camera. And of course, everyone's using that picture. And I'm like, man. But it was just kind of <laughs> in that like glance and turn. So, but I mean, it's working. It was a good shot. Someone, you know, must have just caught that one eighth of a second that mm -hmm. I was looking at the camera accidentally there. But <laughs> it, and it works. It works. It definitely. works. It does. You never know when you break the rules a little bit, right? Happy accidents. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Michael's asking if you uh, got to talk with any other talent at Raw. I did. Absolutely. Um, I mean, almost everyone, I feel mm. like, was pretty friendly. there, And most of it was a head nod and a high. Um, I missed a John Cena fist bump in the hallway. We were walking, walking by, and he's like, go kill it. And I didn't know he was talking to me. He held the fist up, and I'm like, oh, man. And I oh, just kept, I you know. You big-time John I'm, Cena? Yep. I was just like, well, <laughs> I dissed John Cena in the hallway. But um, <laughs> I You're saw, in trouble if you do get hired now. <laughs> yeah, right. He, he might come after me for that one. Um, but, yeah, Jinder Mahal was there. We we talked a little bit. If, you, if anyone saw that picture from the Arnold Classic. Mm-hmm. Um, he's super cool down to earth, but, um, a lot of talks about my, my, my gear, my gimmick gear. Yeah. If people don't know what that is, like, you know, your clothing, your attire. Um, it was interesting. I did have new gear made and it was in the process of being made even before WWE. So it was awesome that I got to air it there. 
debut it. Um, it had the fur and the lace, and it was wonderful. And now, gimmick change. I have to change my mm -hmm. gear again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everyone was was really friendly. You could tell. Like Tuesday when I showed up, I got some high fives, and they're like, "Loosen up, go, you know, go frolic." So I didn't want to impose, you know, step on any toes, but we spent a lot of time in catering. There were mm -hmm. some amazing desserts. So <laughs> that's where you can find me, like with the cookies and cheesecake. I think I think we were talking pierogies with Shane after the show. Too. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Pierogies. Um, I, I, I hear Dean Malenko loves pierogies. Uh, if we, that's an unconfirmed rumor. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, Mar Marcus Mann now says you missed the John Cena fist bump. <laughs> I know I did. Oh, I no. did. We should, I should have left that towel over there on your side. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, never miss the fist bump is a new merchandise uh, from Wrestling Mayhem Show now. Uh, we'll get our own towels made and everything. Uh, and we'll get you one for you for, for you and for Marcus. And for Marcus. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, geez. And, of course, you mentioned Sarah, uh, uh, Sarah Motto, Sarah Del Rey. Uh, you know, we've had on the show. You know, people know from the Indies as well. Um, so what it was um, – so what – what advice do you give for people that are kind of in that position? You kind of gave a little bit already, but, um, uh, you know, that, that have that opportunity to try to get to raw, even to try to get to the position you were to, to, to be backstage like that. Um, honestly be yourself, but I think it's kind of just like, they know what they want. They know what they're looking for. And if they weren't, they see something. Um, I tried to just be calm about everything and give my best. You know, you, you're you just compliant and whatever they ask for, whatever they need, if you're willing to, that's that's what you do. So um, I don't really think I have advice. It's, it's kind of whatever they want. You show up and they cherry pick, mm -hmm. you know, but it's it's like a live interview. So I've been hearing it. It's more of a casting call, you know, like for a, a production than, than they're looking for a wrestler, right? At that point. I mean, you never know. You mm. never know what they're looking for. And being the company that they are, they can do and have whatever they want. So <laughs> um, you just, you don't know when you show up, you put your best foot forward, you come looking dressed for the, the part. I mean, I I see people come in, you know, suits and tennis shoes or some, some goofy things but i mean if you truly want to be with the best company in the world then you dress like it you act like it you shake everyone's hand um and there's so many employees there are thousands of people and you never know um who knows who who's gonna say what and it's kind of just like you know you have to treat everyone as if they could be your boss absolutely uh there there was a <laughs> michael's in the chat room asking did you get any advice from triple h no, but I did get to shake his hand, and nice. I think he said thank you to me before I could say thank you. It was absolutely crazy. That was like my one surreal moment. Um, Sarah said, you know, I shook a bunch of people's hand, but he was kind of back in the corner behind the monitors in Gorilla, and she said, go shake Hunter's hand, and I was like, oh, man. I'm like, really? I'm like, oh, I just didn't want to walk over, but, um, but I did. There were three guys in line. Um, I shook everyone's hand, and then... I was kind of hesitating because he didn't turn to look and I didn't want to be too aggressive, but he turned to me, shook my hand and said, thank you. And I was just like, what? You're wet. You're thanking me. You can't do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, that was probably my favorite moment. That's awesome. Um, so there was a good question in there that I, I think is good. What, what's coming next? What's, what's, what's next for Lady Frost coming up here? Um, I think that it's probably best that I don't make that decision. <laughs> I have a, a group or a team of people that are going to guide me in the right direction. And I feel like I have a family at Rise that they're going to do that. They're going to keep me grounded and humble and, you know, make me wait until it's appropriate to take the next step. But right now it's, it's grinding, it's training. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go full force, get there as often as possible. I actually turned down some work for my own business and canceled a couple group fitness classes because, you know, I want to take this as serious as possible. I don't have that much time. I'm going to make a run at it and, um, hopefully I'll be debuting for real, for real sometime soon. <laughs> well, it, it's definitely a, a good head start. Uh, to get an opportunity like this. I wish you all the best. Of course, you know, uh, I love seeing you out there. 
uh, with Shane. It's been a really cool package to see you guys evolve, uh, especially filming with IWC, seeing Black Diamond and, and the other stuff that I've been seeing online with you guys, too. So uh, where can people find you online? Online, I am Ellie Fredericks underscore on Instagram. And I am Lady Frost on, am I? On Twitter? <laughs> I, think I don't even know. I think that's Listen, just Listen, I've headline. been trying to change my names and they're like, there's this backlash and they make you go through 72 hoops to. On, on Twitter now? Yes. Wow, that used to be a lot easier. Let me let me double check what you are now. <laughs> yeah, thanks, because I don't even know. You are I'm... you are still Ellie Fredericks okay. underscore, but like the the name the display name is Lady, is Lady Frost. Frost. Though, okay, so. so it's still Ellie Fredericks um, for both accounts and on Facebook. Yes. Yep, and then I have the fitness accounts and my personal accounts. So they're just there's fifty of them out there. If you really want to stock my life, there's plenty of plenty there, of venues. You, you have a lot of angles for for promoting yourself from you, a look right, at this. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you got a dot com. You want to promote your dot com while you're at it? Fitnessbrit dot com. That's the business. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and shameless plugs there you go it, 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 keep an eye on that uh, uh to see where she comes up i know you'll be coming up here with uh the iwc i presume we'll see you on a rise show sooner or later as well uh so uh, both great promotions and of course you guys are getting all over the midwest that, that i'm aware of in uh, new jersey it, i think what monster factory you guys monster been doing factory we went there uh last month we'll be there this weekend and i believe the last weekend in april is this coming up may yeah may and uh, we're just in Indiana, Maryland, New Jersey, Ohio, West Virginia, Canada. So we've been taking a tour mm -hmm. every weekend. That's awesome. Good yeah. to see it. Good to see uh, uh, good people getting great opportunities. Thank uh, you. So go check them out and check out everything. And you can check out uh, the Shane in your face and her at ringside. And, and also great gifts of you slapping Jock Sampson. Yes. They, I mean, the slap is becoming my thing. I don't know if we call that the frostbite <laughs> or what, but <laughs> there you go. we need an appropriate name for that. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> go check her out at uh, IndieWrestling.us and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and promote, all, you know, and, and of course support all the indie wrestling and, and uh, keep an eye on her and tell everybody, everybody about her. If you, if you have a local promotion, you want to see uh, Lady Frost and Chain, the Savage Gentleman, uh, uh, hit them up. And uh, hey, get this. This is girl that was on Raw lately. Maybe, uh... <laughs> <laughs> maybe thank, you want us there. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, until next time, and please subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show if you want to check out more interviews like this. And uh, keep an eye on the Indie Wrestling US and Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. Uh, we have, often have events uh, uh, in, in advance whenever we schedule any of these. Because we get them all over the place whenever we can get. Every pro, pro wrestlers have some really interesting schedules. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. We do. Yes. Uh, and it's whenever we can. Uh, so thank you so much for spending time with us. And until next time, please support and do this. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.